Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining. This webinar is going to talk about how to use the games effectively in the program. So your first step is looking at the games that we really have in the program that you'll use at the end of your workshop. There are different interactive activities like the true or false one, but you'll notice at the end they're much more interactive. So where we're really going to start them out is here in sorting out the risks. Now, the way you deliver this game is by hitting start activity. And once you hit the brain here, it will come up with a consequence of impaired driving. You're going to allow the students to fill in what type of consequence this is. So whether they're typing in the chat or they're shouting it out, um, you know, I try to keep things pretty active and, and moving fast paced. So um, they just let you know, OK, this is a social consequence. You'll find with some of the consequences that are put up here, they could be um, put into various categories. They could be put into all three and you might have to provide some context to what it actually means. So for example, your family is hurt. You could interpret this as your family is hurt, like upset that you made the choice to drive high, or you could interpret it like your family is physically like a sibling or somebody was injured because of you driving impaired. So what kind of consequence would that be? It depends on the context you provide. Now you can provide that context or you can ask a youth in the room to provide that as well. So if we say your family was emotionally upset because you were driving high and disappointed, you could put that in the category of a social consequence or a social risk. You then hit add to list. And you'll keep going until you go through all 12 of them. For sake of time, I won't go through all 12 with you, but you get the idea of how the game functions, right? Relying on other people to drive you. Now you become maybe the mute in your friends group, in your friend group, right? It's not fun to always have to rely on other people and lose that independence. So this could be a social risk. Um, but if you're always having to pay people for gas too, that could also be a financial consequence. Um, maybe it's hard to get to your job because you don't have that freedom to, to drive easily and you'll put it in your save to list. Once you have gone through all 12 aspects of the game and all of the participants have decided which categories they're going to apply those consequences to, you hit this view list. All right, this view list is right here at the bottom left and you'll notice that it's aggregated all of the risks into the categories that the youth decided on. Every single time you play this game, you're gonna notice that it looks different in how many risks are in each category. It just depends on how your youth choose to organize it. So this is the game for really looking at the consequences of impaired driving and, and those risks. Our next activity is one of my favorite ones. Driving high is not a mistake, it's a choice. So with this activity, it's very independent and re requires very little work from you. All that happens is you ask the students to take five minutes and write down on a piece of paper what they can do to reduce the risk of impaired driving. Strategies they can think of to stop someone from driving impaired, how they can plan their night ahead, all sorts of different ideas like that. And once that five minutes is up, you'll have the students share, whether they're in groups or individually, they share those ideas and they're learning from one another. This part here, we're really engaging in that peer-to-peer -peer learning. Once everyone has shared and they've come up with everything that they can think of, you can put up your list. And so this is the list that we have here on the program, but of course, the most valuable part of this section is going to be the ideas that they come up with. Next is the activity saying no. With this activity, what we do is put the youth into six different groups. And these are some different peer pressures. Some of them are the same, you can see, but some of them are different peer pressures that youth often experience in the conversation of impaired driving. So that can be being a designated driver and having peer pressure to use cannabis, um, various situations. So in their groups, they pick a card and they have to decide how they are going to overcome this peer pressure, how they'll react to it. 
They take five minutes to come up with their strategy. And then once that five minutes is up, they share with the class what they came up with. Once that's all been done and everybody has shared, you can click the card and it comes up with our suggestions on what they can do. So with all the games that I've shown so far, they all take about 10 minutes to facilitate. This one included, it also takes about 10 minutes to facilitate depending on how much of it you want to do. So for example, there's three videos. Each of these videos are about a minute to a minute and a half in length. And you watch the videos, they come up with the end with different peer pressures or scenarios that youth may find themselves in. And uh, the main character will ask, what do I do now? What do I do in this situation? And how do I get out of it? And it's up to the class. You can put them in groups individually or just as a, an entire class discuss what should be the next step, what to do to get out of that situation. Um, so this one's pretty straightforward, just watching videos and coming up with strategies. And finally, this is our last one. This one takes about 20 minutes to facilitate. It is the most popular game. I really encourage you to use it whenever possible. It, um, like I said, is gonna take a lot longer than all of the other videos. So if you choose to use this one, um, just be aware of how long it can take. And I find that when you have an early morning class, Monday morning, you know, that first period class, um, and the students are giving you zero and you're you're coming in with so much energy you've had your coffee and you're ready but they're there with their heads on their desks and tired sometimes i just jump into this game right away instead of facilitating all of the regular material at the beginning they're not listening to it anyways just dive into the game and that will get them engaged with the content and having more fun so this is um an activity where we'll put them into two teams Jeopardy style. If you're facilitating online, I usually do it by first names. So everybody who has a first name from A to F is going to be on the blue team. And everyone from G to Z is going to be on the orange team. Some key things to note when facilitating this game. Whenever a team is asking or answering a question, you're going to click their color. You watch the hand go down and they will decide which category, which number they choose. So it doesn't have a timer or anything. So I would keep it in mind that, you know, count in your head or, you know, try to give uh, the same time frame to every student who answers. Don't let it drag on too long or else it will lose the enthusiasm of the game. And once they answer, check and see if it's right. If it's incorrect, you'll hit no. And if it's yes, it will automatically add the points at the bottom here. Now, if they go to answer a question and they get it incorrect, you're going to notice that the question stays there. It doesn't disappear anymore, leaving it open for the other team to then answer that question already knowing the answer. If you make any mistakes throughout this game, don't worry about it. It happens. It happens all the time. Um, and the students are usually pretty good sports about it. But you can't adjust the numbers. So for example, if I forgot to click orange when it's orange's turn and it's still registering as blue and orange is reading the question, they answer, they get it correctly, but you see it saying current team blue and I hit yes, I can't switch over those 200 points to orange. There's no way of making that change. So just be very careful that you're always clicking the correct color. But that's it. That's how you facilitate this game. I promise the, the students will love this one and they get pretty competitive. So um, if you can make sure that you give the full 20 minutes and attention to this game, uh, it'll really allow for some great engagement. So thank you for watching this session and I hope you feel more confident and prepared in delivering the games in the program.